Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you click like, subscribe and share and that you drop a comment in the comment section below this video. So this video will dive right into it is on the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, which is happening April 20th, 2024. And this is major in astrology, you're going to find videos everywhere about it. And so we're going to dive into what is it going to bring us what's coming up. So I did a little bit of research looking up when was the last time that Jupiter and Uranus were together in Taurus. And it's some pretty interesting times. Um, one is 1941. And then when we look back in 1098, um, 1198, I believe. Um, and it goes back a little bit earlier prior to that. But I was looking at the events that occurred during these years of Jupiter conjunct Uranus. And it's interesting because they usually point to an advancement in consciousness on a looking towards more aesthetic looking towards more beauty more healing and harmony but at the same time it goes hand in hand with intense strife and um beliefs conflict around beliefs conflict around fundamental beliefs in 1941 you guys know we were in the middle of world war ii and um yes on the one hand there was absolute total warfare which is well known that people almost screamed for it back then, um, not understanding on that level. But then on the other hand, there were significant technological advancements, for example, the first computer that was built and created during that time functioning, really, really functioning computer. And um, medical advancements that happened as well, but also fundamentally a change in the monetary system and in the world, the global economic setup and the powers that be. Same thing happened similarly in 1098, where the first crusades happened during that time. So we see a belief, a conflict of belief, a conflict in values. And, um, depending on how we evolve as a collective, that's how we're going to be dealing with these conflict and values. Now we've seen the in recent news as I'm doing this video, the events in the Middle East, of course, escalate again, because what else? Sorry, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to be that cynical. No. <laughs> but um, However, we see events in the, the Middle East escalate, unfortunately. But on the one hand, so we can expect this Jupiter-Uranus Jupiter conjunction to bring us on the one hand, if we're looking at history and the, the effects of the events back then, on one hand, we can see um, what happened in the past, that yes, it brought technology, it brought um, changes in the economic setup. The I mean, the Crusades in the Middle Ages were fundamental in setting up our current banking system. So it's funny when we're looking at that, because that whole red thread that pulls through history is now on the line in these times. So some of you have been watching my videos, you realize I keep picking that up, we are going into economic change. And this economic change is going to be huge. And um, this is, is, it's really going to be some kind of a fundamental shift. And it's not too far off. It's really not too far off. And this year is going to be one of those key years, those pivot years towards that. Ultimately, it um, will be better for humanity. But again, how humanity deals with it, how we get on the way there, um, is it really going to be as, as open hearted as it looks? Or is it going to be more authoritarian and totalitarian? So we'll, we'll have a look. But so anyways, Jupiter and Uranus are um, coming together. And um, so what is Jupiter? Jupiter, we know as the planet that expands things, the planet that rewards things. Now, personally, I rather prefer the rewards that are coming from Saturn, because Jupiter can tend to give fools gold, can tend to blow things up in one and you've lost it like a couple weeks later, or months later, or what have you. Jupiter gives me the, the feeling of the price is right win or a lot of win, and then people are broke again in like four years from their million dollar win but saturn when you win from saturn and when saturn rewards you it may not be as much but it is valuable and it lasts and no one can take it away from you nothing can take it away from you so there's there's something about that with jupiter so but what jupiter does do well is elevate it's like a rising helium balloon <laughs> So it elevates our consciousness and it elevates our, our thinking and it elevates our um, 
perspective so that we have a broader view of things, a bigger view of things, a wider view of things. And through that, yes, it can be seen as beneficial or a benefic because it brings in new solutions, new concepts, new ideas, new all kinds of things. Now, Uranus is is surprising. It's electric. It's instantaneous. It's out of nowhere. It's, um, it can be very deep, right? But Uranus brings in a fundamental shift, or it's almost like a catapulting forward. And although you could say that Uranus also destroys, it's not on the same level as a Pluto destruction, which is really, yeah. <laughs> so Jupiter and Uranus, this expansion, whoosh, and this shift, and this sudden shift, this sudden catapulting. It's almost as if that rubber band was snapped and away we go. So our awareness, our consciousness is being elevated and catapulted. But what we do with that still stands out. We'll, we're going to see because we can just get better at making war. We can be get better at making systems. We can get better at... Um, creating this authoritarian lifestyle and giving um, people a sense of false autonomy or false options of freedom. Oh, you can choose this, this, and this, but in reality, we're taking the freedom away from you to do this, this, and this, or be this, this, and this. So we have to be really aware and mindful what the energy is bringing in. I mean, what we do with the situations that are coming in um, due to this, this, these, these energies or these consciousness currents that are flowing through our collective. So this wouldn't be a tarot video if I wasn't doing tarot readings, right? So let's have a look at the collective first and what the tarot is saying, what's coming up. But then we're going to go Aries through to Pisces and have a look at each sign and see what cards are coming up for you. So we're starting off with a collective and, um, Seeing what's coming up for the collective for the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, please. The Jupiter Uranus conjunction. It's interesting because um, here where I am, it seems we totally skipped spring and just dove into summer. It is, it's warm. Um, I saw already parents with their children out and the children just in diapers and nothing else, which is quite you know, when I was growing up, it, we weren't there yet normally <laughs> at this stage of the year. That would come later in like July, August, maybe. But it was a bit cooler back then still. Not anymore. Yeah, so something, something's definitely shifted here. So let's have a look at the collective. The collective, please. The collective. Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. What can we expect? And what is the overall energy? So the overall energy is the two of swords. And the Eight of Wands. Wow. Silent progression, you guys. Silent and swift progression. The Eight of Wands is speed. It is whoosh. These are arrows flying through the air representing communication. The Two of Swords has to do with silence. It has to do with indecision, not really standing up, taking a stance this way or that, um, waiting for information still. So it could be a wait for information in the energy, in the collective energy, um, a non-reactiveness, a non-responsiveness. So that's interesting. Let's see what, what this is referring to. So what we're moving out of, what is to come, what is and what is to come, and the advice to the collective on how to deal with that, what we're moving out of is the Ace of Swords. So the Ace of Swords, what does this card represent? It means inspiration usually. It can mean a mental capacity as well, focusing on the mind, focusing on the intellect, focusing on analysis, focusing on judgment, discernment, analysis, all this, this direction. So it seems like the collective consciousness is moving out of that, which would indicate that they're developing an understanding and an acceptance of an intelligence that lies beyond the mind as well. So it lies um, emotional intelligence, emotional um, abilities, capabilities are going to be come more important as we move forward. But also what I'm seeing with this sword, and this is just psychic, intuitive, I'm not quite sure, is the sword of war. All of a sudden this, this flash came for me where I saw someone riding forward in battle with their sword held up and that being... Um, 
a less of an image. It's almost like it was fading into the past. Now, where we are now is the Eight of Swords <laughs> being um, tied up, all right? The Eight of Swords not quite being unsure which way forward, which way is forward, which way should we go, Should which way should the collective move into. There comes kind of an insecurity or doubt there, and what are we moving into? And again, the hint that there is an economic change. There has to be an economic change. That comes, this is the eight of coins. This has to do with work. It has to do with money. It has to do with mastery. And it has to do with um, learning, learning to, to create, to learning to make, learning to manifest. So it feels like the collective is um, still finding the optimal system to manifest a sense of value or a sense of reward or a sense of um yeah, so that's what NFTs kind of does really well is it, it gives a tangible value to value, even if it's sentimental or emotional. Um, it feels as if there's this new defining, this new laying out of terms on an economic level so that money is not just money anymore. It really becomes something that denotes value. And this value can encompass a lot of different things. It's not just this, the, these coins against the potatoes. It, it's literally going to encompass life force energy in a sense. But we're learning how to do that, how to make that manifest. Another thing that is moving away with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is this, um, with the Ace of Swords, is this infallible belief in authority and leadership. So leadership is going to come under fire. It's really going to be challenged with the energies that come in with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. It's almost like some leaders, and this is a year 2024 where there are elections happening everywhere. So people have the opportunity to really show their discontent, their distrust, their um not really sure if the system as it is, as it's standing right now, is even tenable anymore, if it's even carryable anymore, if, if, if we should bring in a complete change. So there's this feeling on the collective through this Jupiter and Uranus that we know too much now, right? The Jupiter has expanded our consciousness, has expanded our awareness. Uranus gives us the flash insights and inspirations. And we're like, we know too much and we can't continue playing this game. We cannot participate in this anymore because it's gotten redundant. It's gotten ridiculous. That's like, you know, an adult trying to play the game in the sandbox, knowing <laughs> It, it just doesn't work anymore. So there has been some growth, but the question remains, now what? Um, we know this doesn't work. We know the system is a farce. We know that this is a joke. We know that our leaders aren't leaders. We know that um, the, the way that everything is set up, it, it just can't work. But how can we make the shift without having society collapse? How can we make the shift without suffering? And that's where we're all stuck, right? So it feels as if this is really going to bring that to the fore where people realize, okay, we'll, we'll start with the money. We'll start with our fundamental value system. And through that, many things are going to shift and change. So there's a shift in values. That's what I'd really like to, to, to put down with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that is made visible. Okay, And the shift in values happened already before, but what's really coming up and out What's really being made visible is that we're seeing it now. We're seeing it in the collective. We're seeing it in the people around us. We're seeing it in how people talk about things, respond to things, think about things. Um, we're seeing it in the energy that we focus into certain aspects of our lives. So the advice card is to be very careful. Seven of Cups with the choices that are being offered moving forward. So Again, this is election year in many places across the globe, in many countries, 2024 is a year where you will be sold a lot of things. <laughs> so the Seven of Cups is warning because remember in the Rider weight version, a man is standing in front of seven cups and each cup represents a different downfall path. So um, one represents fame, another represents fortune, another represents security, another represents wealth, 
and money and all these things. And in the eighth cup, you see this man walking away from the seven cups, saying no to all of them to find his true happiness and true luck. So this seven of cups is warning about the illusion, the delusion, the whole thing going on and warning don't get caught up in things. Another thing that the seven of cups is representing is lies, deceit, deception. So again, things coming to the fore, lies being uncovered, the truth coming out. Um, and again, it's, it's also because I believe that this, it's not just, you know, it's also our will. <laughs> it's not just the, these, <laughs> the, the signs in the sky. It is right. But it's also more our will that these generations that are alive now are unwilling to live the serfdom that our ancestors suffered under, unwilling to live the slavery, the the um, the surrender to authority just because, the respect for position over person, the um, setting a position and a person in uh, equating a position with their person or the person with the position and respecting that to the point of denial, right? Our generations are not doing this anymore. We're speaking truth to power. We're questioning a lot of things. We're looking at things in a different way, in a different light, and the generations coming in even more so. Our um, indigo wave that happens um, with these kids that were born in my generation and younger, there are we came in to break that cycle, to bust that, to to really once and for all end this serfdom that the entire world has been been um, chained into in a sense. And it feels like now there's a opportunity coming up to really see that this has changed this mindset, this mentality. And that opportunity is also simultaneously offering us a choice on a collective level. What are we going to do? So the, the excitement remains and we'll see what the collective decides to do. But, um, I want to stay optimistic. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Probably we're going to straddle both sides of the fence. So there will be some aspects, of course, that are authoritarian and totalitarian that people are going to say, ah, what the hell? And then um, there are other aspects that are definitely going to be more liberating and freeing. We, we were probably highly likely going to have a tendency to do both. So expect changes within the next year or so when it comes to laws around global economy. I mean, they're already trying to do that with um, on a, a quieter level, especially with digital nomads are seeing a lot of changes with what they're allowed to do, what they're capable of doing and so on and so forth. And um, on the one hand, yes, you still have the freedom, but now there are a lot more obligations coming in that weren't there, let's say, 10 years ago or five years ago even. OK, so we'll see what happens. But for my part, I'm pretty sure that most of the changes, the, the really interesting changes that are happening are on the economic levels and this entails everything. So economic groups that are coming together an economic power shift around the world, um, currency destabilizations in some countries um, in order to bring in this new concept or idea of how do we manifest value? How do we denote value? And what does value entail? Um, is it just the labor and transport or is there more to it right so there's a there's a lot going into this shift as the collective is is moving through it all right so let's start off with aries and what this jupiter taurus is going to bring for aries and what's happening for aries please Aries, what's happening for Aries with Jupiter, Taurus, um, Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus conjunction? What's happening for Aries, Jupiter, and Uranus? Aries, so for you, you've got, wow, there's a lot coming up when it comes to your work. You guys might feel inspired to start something new. You may be feeling like, I can't do this anymore. The death card, transformation. But there's also a hand, you know, the transformation in your mindset or your thinking. I'm feeling a lot of you are finally releasing the shackles of the past. You're finally letting it go. And this is the transformation that you're going through. So however you perceived yourself, however you saw yourself in life, this is falling away and you're able to move into something absolutely new and fresh. It's almost like the, the whatever was holding you back 
Whatever you allowed yourself to be held back by, you're letting it all go. Next up, you have the Knight of Coins and the Page of Wands. And the Knight of Coins and the Page of Wands is indicating for me that you might be stepping into something communicative moving forward. This may be media, communication, um, some form of maybe writing, but there's some kind of monetary reward for you showing yourself and expressing yourself, showing up and being a messenger, being a bearer of messages, the Page of Wands. You may also be receiving notice about money, some kind of money being returned to you or brought back to you as well. Um, a return of money to you. Some of you may be getting payouts. Some of you may also be receiving, if you're ending something, a final payout that is above or exceeds your expectations. But there's something coming where you're shifting what you're doing primarily around money, around um, hmm, your business, around all of that. And there's a major shift coming there for you. Okay. You've also got the Empress that is coming up. So more creativity coming your way. No, the Queen of Cups, excuse me. So the Queen of Cups also has to do with creativity, but it is um, on an emotional level. So you're, you're more going to be focusing in on what feels good to you, what feels right to you, what feels necessary in the moment for you. You're more going to be focused in on um, making sure that whatever you're doing, you're feeling good about it. You don't want to run counter to your feelings anymore. You've realized that this is unhealthy and you don't want to do anything against your health. So Aries, I'm feeling this Jupiter Uranus conjunction is a perfect time for you to start to really let go of the past, release it all, and to start something fresh. And I know we all say that, let go of the past, release it all. <laughs> it's like this trope now. But it, it really, there's a fundamental shift in your mindset about yourself that is coming and how your role in the world, what you have to offer the world, what you can give the world, and um, how you're going to do it. Okay, so I do see for some of you that you're either leaving your job um, or restructuring how you make money and what you do for money. Okay. All right. Moving onward to Taurus, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, it's happening in your sign. So this will have to do with your, um, literally with your vitality, with your vitality. Okay. Some of you are going to feel a boost, a tremendous boost where you're feeling empowered to make changes, make things happen. You may be feeling inspired as well because Taurus is ruled by Venus um, to make changes in your um, environment, your immediate environment, such as beautifying your home. All of a sudden you have the energy to get that home that you desired, or you have the energy to do the makeover on yourself that you've always wanted to do. But there's something around your beautifying aesthetics and suddenly stepping out. Some of you are suddenly going to glow up, suddenly going to glow up. But others of you, you might be feeling completely the opposite, where you feel like your energy is, is sucked out of you. Here we have the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is indicating a love or a romance situation. We've got, and it's in the Venusian energies. We've also got the Eight of Wands and we've got the Page of Swords. So I, <laughs> interesting Taurus, um, because this may indicate that something is, um, or someone is returning back to you. There may be some kind of a, um, someone with whom you've had difficult communication, okay? That's what I'm picking up. That's what I'm hearing. Communication was extremely difficult. There was no love left in the communication, but now there's a coming around again, maybe an apology. It's coming out of nowhere. This is a surprise for you. This is unexpected. And it feels like all of a sudden you're communicating with someone again that you hadn't been in quite some time. <clears throat> It also feels that some of you may expect, um, can expect an unusual offer, an offer out of nowhere that is really wasn't on your radar, is very unusual. And this can be an offer around anything, communication, relationship, making money, you name it. But this offer is coming suddenly and out of nowhere. 
And if you take it, it will change your life um, for better or not. I mean, I, I trust your personal judgment in this. So <laughs> if, if this offer comes to you, you'll know what to do with it because this is going to be something pivotal, okay, pivotal. So some of you may, um, but I feel for most of you, it's going to be, have to something to do with a relationship or a friendship, okay? So... Moving on to Gemini. Gemini, this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. What is it bringing you? What is it bringing Gemini, please? Gemini. What's, bring, what's it bringing for Gemini? Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. What can you expect? You've got the Eight of Swords, the Six of Coins, Five of Swords, and yeah, Seven of Coins. Gemini, I feel like you've been really hard on yourself because things haven't been working out the way you've hoped. It's like you put a lot of effort and energy into your work, into your project, into your relationships, into things, and everything came up not out. So Seven of Coins has to do with long waits, hard investments, hard work. Six of Coins, but followed by the Five of Swords, fighting, um, being surrounded by judgments, being hurt, um, being wounded, being backstabbed as well. Maybe someone cheated you out of money. Eight of Swords, not knowing what to do about it, feeling tied up. So what I'm getting from the energy from these cards is you're, there's a part of you that's asking, where's the justice? Where's the karma in this situation? What did I do to deserve this? And it just feels as if your time is coming with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that suddenly out of nowhere, something blocks can be released and you can catapult yourself forward. Um, the key to this though, is to release the feelings of the need for justice, the need for vengeance, the need for retribution, the need to see them suffer the way that they made you suffer, the way you suffered, okay? The key to this is really to um, move on and continue working on yourself. And we see that here with the chariot moving on on the bottom. And this was the first card, which I flipped over here, which is working on yourself and moving on, okay? So the key to this, um, utilizing this, this energy is to allow it to catapult you. Now, Gemini, you don't really stay stuck. There are other signs that tend to stay stuck. You keep it moving. You like to keep it flowing. But in some things, they just seem to hook into you, anchor into you. And you need to remove that. You need to break free from that. And you can, you can just set the intention to, it really is that. And um, let it go. Don't hold on trying to find or see what the outcome will be. Just move on. Utilize this energy. See it as a, you know, you're, you're, you're hitchhiking, okay? And this, this car drives by and you know that this car is a good car. <laughs> Bad example, okay? Let me take a different one. A current comes that carries you forward and you need to jump in it, Okay. And that's the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. It's carrying you forward. Don't stay stuck in the past. Don't look back. So if, for example, you um, all of a sudden feel this energy of, oh, I got to change this. I got to move out from this apartment or I got to um, get this new job. Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Don't hold yourself back. Super important. Okay. The energies that are coming up from these cards have a lot to do with vengeance and retribution and... Um, well, some of you, you may be thinking or feeling this. Others of you, some people may be thinking or feeling this towards you. But this is the energy you need to um, grow out of, distance yourself from, release, let go, move on. Okay. Um, cancer. What's coming up for Cancer, please? Jupiter-Uranus conjunction for Cancer. Jupiter-Uranus conjunction for Cancer. And we've got the Ace of Cups. We've got the King of Cups healing. Okay, Cancer, we've got um, for you the High Priestess. So definitely a time where your intuition is heightened, deepened, and you're made more aware of things. Um, past life events may be coming up for you as well that need to be released. That's coming 
just spontaneously I'm feeling like some kind of a past life trigger. Um, this may be someone that you're with. This may be an emotional experience. This may be a sudden fear or anxiety or something plops up out of nowhere on your plate. Know that this is coming from a past life and this is your time to release it. Acknowledge it, work through it, release it. You've got the eight of cups, again, releasing, moving on, walking away. And you've got the ace of cups, okay? Some of you are holding on to some kind of a secret cancer. Some of you cancers want to move out. <laughs> Quite literally, some of you cancers are holding on to a secret. You want to move out. Either you've been looking around for new apartments, you've been looking around for a new home, um, or you've secretly already moved out on someone, your family, your partner, your friend, you name it. But some of you guys want to move out and um, are making plans around that. Jupiter and Uranus will make that happen for you. So if you're not quite sure this is what I want, be mindful because Jupiter and Uranus are going to bring you that sudden bam and you're out <laughs> and you look back and you didn't even know what happened. But you set that intention before the energy came through and the energy just manifested it and made it happen. And Again, Jupiter expands, Uranus does sudden things. This is in the sign of Taurus, which has to do with what we own, what we possess, what we have, what we hold on to, um, what gives us a sense of security and stability, what, you know, so if it's not your home, then it's your job. So be mindful, Cancer, because I am picking up that some of you are looking for a home, looking to finally settle down as well, to find a home. Is this the person I can settle down with? But for some of you, it's like, I need to get out of this. I need to leave. Leo, what's going on with Leo, please? Leo, what's coming up? We've got the Two of Cups. All of a sudden, I heard the love boat signal there in the song, Seven of Cups. And the Three of Wands, a Leo. Leo wants to be swept off their feet. There's Jupiter-Uranus conjunction here. They want to be swept off their feet. They want their armor to be taken off. It's like this armor. This is going to, this energy is going to feel really heavy to you if you fight it. Okay, if you fight stepping into your vulnerability. And um, if you want to hold on to that personality armor, to that persona shield, um, it's going to get really heavy for you. So you are stepping now into through a portal into a time where it's imperative that you show vulnerability, that you show that you're not afraid of showing how vulnerable you truly are. Because you are, Leo, you're looking for love. Some of you guys are looking for the right partner, the right person. You're, you're, you're wondering, where are they? Why is this taking so long? Um, you may be hopelessly, romantically falling for someone, seven of cups, two of cups, and having fantasies about your future, right? But you may also be manifesting or visualizing a future where you have the right person in front of you. Jupiter and Uranus conjunction may make this happen very suddenly. But again, be mindful because Jupiter is that planet that kind of it makes things a little larger than life, you know, <laughs> and, um, but you've got the two of cups, seven of cups, three of wands. So this is really a beautiful visual for, for your future, actually, you know, that some dream is going to come true. Some manifestation is going to show itself after this, um, conjunction. So in May. Okay. All right. Then we're at Virgo already. Virgo, what's coming up for you with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction? What's happening with Virgos, Virgo, 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 Jupiter, Uranus conjunction here. The overall energy we've got for Virgo is closing off a cycle. And this is a cycle of grief. Okay. Virgo is finally truly on a soul level stepping into happiness and joy. And Virgo is really, they've learned their lesson. They've gone through a cycle of grief. They've gone through a cycle of disappointment. They've tried to make so many things manifest that should bring happiness, peace, stability, and all of that. And every time they were disappointed, some of you Virgos may have lost someone that was very close and very dear to you. Um, and that caused you to spiral through grief for quite some time, for longer than you you anticipated or expected to. And now 
this grief is finally easing up. It's finally letting go. So Jupiter and Uranus together coming in, washing it all out, taking it. These planets have the, the, the power and the energy to, to magnetize that, to pull it out and to take it with them <laughs> as they cycle forward. Um, their energy is really going to shift things for you. But also if you've been financially disappointed, Virgo, a shift is coming in and happening for you with this energy. So the cards that are showing up for you are the Ace of Wands, New Beginnings, Fresh Starts, you setting the intention, the desire, and the wanting to have a fresh start and a new beginning. And being inspired, seeing something that inspires you. Then you've got the King of Wands taking energy, action, making things happen. And you've got the Page of Swords articulation, getting the information that you need. Okay. Virgo, somebody may be watching you as well. You may be keeping an eye on someone. Let that go. This is all the past and your future is so much brighter than this. And um, so really don't, don't whew, move forward, move forward, allow the grief to pass, allow this expectation as well. That is within you kind of that things won't work out, that things are hard, that things are difficult, that um, it takes hard work to get anywhere or do anything. All these things, let it flow, let it flow. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And as you're opening your eyes, imagine yourself stepping through a portal into a new world where this is not the case, where it's not that dense, the resistances are not that heavy. And um, your efforts are seen, they're rewarded, they're respected, and you're surrounded by people that love you for it. Okay, moving on to Libra. Libra, what's coming up for you with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, please? Oh, Libra. So we've got for you the seven of wands standing up for yourself, the seven of swords trying to get away with something, and the knight of cups. Libra, um, it feels like, you know, there's some kind of, what is this, page of coins. Um, there's a hope here I'm feeling on the table. There's a hope and a... Um, We've got the sun and we've got the queen of swords as well. There's a hope here. I, I'm not quite sure, but it just feels with the seven of swords, it would feel all good. But there's some kind of, um, what am I feeling? I'm feeling Libra that it's almost like there's this situation that you know you shouldn't touch. You know you shouldn't do it. But you're finding reasons to justify you doing it seven of wands you're finding um reasons where you're lying to yourself seven of swords and others possibly but um you're finding reasons to do things that you know you shouldn't do okay it would be all hunky-dory and it would look really cute if it was if, if the seven of wands and the seven of swords weren't there you have the knight of cups which is lover lover even though it's not lasting You've got the page of coins, a solid offer. You've got the sun card, which is happiness, joy, luck, and expression. And you've got the queen of swords, which is decision-making. And this is your card and showing that you are consciously, consciously, because the queen of swords is super conscious, making the decision to do something you know better. You know better. You know better. That You're defending it, seven of wands, and you're trying to be sneaky about it, seven of swords. Jupiter and Uranus, as I said before, in the collective reading, it shows where we lie to ourselves in the collective, um, uncovers truths, um, blasts away the, the outer. So you won't be able to lie to yourself anymore. Okay. And when you do this, and this is why it's so important not to lie to yourself because you lose respect for yourself. And when you lose respect for yourself, everything starts going downhill. You have to learn to trust yourself. So that means holding yourself to high regards, hold not doing things that you know are not good for you. So I feel like saying this Jupiter and Uranus is really making that clear to you. Some kind of an experience where you are on the verge of selling your soul <laughs> and um, Jupiter and Uranus pulling you back from the edge, showing you this is what you're doing. This is what it's about to be and happen. And you need to stop this, okay? 
So that's what I'm I'm feeling coming up for you. So it's a good thing, but it might not be the easiest experience for you. Okay. It's a, but for most of you, it's going to be very gentle and very soft, but I do feel an energy of mm, a better pathway would be better for you than the one you're choosing to go down. And you're justifying all these reasons why. Okay. Alrighty, so moving on to Scorpio. Scorpio, what's yeah. coming up for you with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction? Jupiter-Uranus conjunction for Scorpio, please. Scorpio. Jupiter-Uranus conjunction for Scorpio. What's coming up? What's coming up? We've got the Seven of Wands for Scorpio as well. Standing up, standing strong. What else do we have here? We've got the Five of Coins. Okay, defensiveness because you feel shut out. And we've got the hanged man not making any significant choices. We've got the star, your hope. And again, the page of swords information. All right, so Scorpio, it feels like whoever's listening to this, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And it feels like you're in complete survival mode, almost where you're fighting just to survive. And so you don't have what it takes. You don't have the energy to make decisions that would catapult your life forward. It's just about maintaining and um, seven of wands fighting. Five of coins, not having enough, not having the resources that you feel you need to survive, but also feelings around inadequacy or not being enough. And you've got the hanged man, which is staying stuck in this. So you can catalyze this, um, you know, catapult yourself forward with the Jupiter in Taurus energy. It's interesting here with the hope and the information. Um, there's some kind of an information that is coming to you. And you're actually hoping for, I feel Scorpios, you guys are praying to God, you're praying to higher, you're praying to spirit, you're praying to source. And there's this, this hope that can I get an answer? Can I, and I want to say, know that you've been heard, know that your prayers have been heard, know that the information is coming to you. Um. Yeah. The chariot is about moving forward in your own autonomy, your own inner authority, following your own inner authority. This is super important, okay? Only do what you feel called to do. If you don't feel called to do something, do not do it, Scorpio. Imperative to follow your inner authority. Um, it also feels as if this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus is... It's going to illuminate some hmm, shifts that need to happen in your sense of self-esteem and self-value in order for that to manifest in a way that you can actually reap that value. You can benefit from that value, okay? So I'd say it's going to highlight for you mainly working on your self-esteem, your self-confidence, um, working on healing that and not always feeling like you don't belong, you're shut out, finding feelings of belonging. And there's going to be a massive shift in that. And when that changes, you'll see everything else change as well so that you're able to move out of survival. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to Sagittarius. And I know that was a simple, straightforward message for you, Scorpio, but that's what's coming through, that that's your main um, point to focus in on now. And then everything else that you may be thinking about or worried about, it's going to fall into place because you fixed the main core thing. And again, Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus, it, it's not just uh, money, it's value. <laughs> what do we value? And with you, I feel with the five of coins card that you pulled, that you had, that came out for you, self-value. How do you value yourself? Because that shows how you value others that are in your life as well. So some people may not be feeling valued by you currently because the truth is you're not really valuing yourself currently. So in order for them to feel you value them, you have to value yourself. Okay. Alrighty, so let's see here. Moving onward to Sag. Sagittarius, Jupiter, and Uranus conjunction. And we've got the King of Swords. We've got the, what's with the Seven of Wands, say? Hey? And the Seven of Coins. 
Okay, so this this seems to be a little bit of a tougher conjunction for Sagittarius. Um, it feels as if it's almost as if Sag feels um, this is going right by me. Yeah, you've got the Ten of Swords here and the Death Guard. Oh my gosh, Sag. Um, okay, Sag. It may be, you know, time to, to end something completely. You may feel like this energy is going right by you and doesn't affect you at all. Okay? That's that's another thing. And it may cause like uh, feelings, you know, triggering feelings deep within you that my situation can't change. My situation is unchangeable. For others, those changes and miracles happen. Miracles don't happen to me. I'm stuck with this and nothing's working out and I have to continue battling forward. Okay, so it, it feels as if you have to make the decision to become a part of the galactic, cosmic, collective again, and not see yourself as someone standing on the sidelines, not seeing yourself as just an observer, watcher, non-participant, but um, become aware of how these energies also touch your life, how they also touch you and how you can flow with that, right? So it, it really feels as if um, there's there's this little child, you know, those kids back in school that would kind of stand off to the sidelines and then be sad though that nobody included them, but at the same time they they were they put themselves on the sidelines, right? So it kind of feels like a little bit like that where. You're not feeling a part of it, Sag, but at the same time, it's your choice not to be. And you're like, but I don't want to be a part of this, this chaos, but it's the human condition. So finding love in the situation, how to love yourself and love others and love the situation or staying in a consciousness or awareness of love, no matter how dark it gets. I think that's your challenge with this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus. Okay. And um, to, to not disconnect and fly off somewhere but to be present to be here to be a part of what's going down here and what's going on that's really important okay moving onward and we've got capricorn capricorn coming up capricorn and this jupiter uranus conjunction in capricorn and there we have your cards are coming up capricorn we've got the wheel of fortune We've got the devil, which is your card, and we've got the ace of coins. So this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is really going to knock it out of the ballpark for you when it comes to material success. It could be that finally things happen. Suddenly your house is sold and at a higher price than you actually put it, you know, intended. Um, they paid you the full price and then some or something. <laughs> but there's some kind of a financial windfall that is huge, a, a, a catapulting forward financially that is coming in for you. And we've again, we've got the Ace of Coins, the devil, which in this case represents material goods, worldly goods and worldly success, because that is what the devil rules. We've got your Wheel of Fortune your fortunes are changing. So if things weren't working out for you up until now, things are about to lighten up due to this conjunction. Sudden surprises, okay? We've also got, again, the queen of coins. This is your card. And we've got the five of wands winning a battle, okay? Mastery with the magician here at the bottom. And the other card is liberating yourself, eight of swords, from feeling trapped. Okay, Capricorn, this is your time. I think, I feel, not I think, I feel like this year is a year where some of you Capricorns, you're going to finally receive accolades. You're finally going to receive acknowledgement for what you do and how you do it. It really feels as if you're finally going to hear from higher or from somewhere else. You're going to receive messages that what you do is good. There's some kind of acknowledgement that is coming in for you, okay? Um, one more card for you, Capricorn. Yes, Ace of Coins. Not only is that corroborating my impression, this is going to catapult you forward. So promotion, acknowledgement um, at your place of work, but also in your home life, that things are going to go really well. Again, I see some of you finally selling your homes, the sale of this home coming through for you. But um, if that's what you're looking to do, 
but it does feel like a, a catapult forward. Okay. So I don't really feel that Jupiter in Uranus is going to affect any more aspects of your life <laughs> besides this monetary one. And somehow it's tied to property. Some of you may be inheriting, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on situation. But there's something about real estate, money coming to you. Okay. All right. Moving on to Aquarius. Aquarius, what's coming up for you? Aquarius, Jupiter, Uranus, conjunction, Jupiter, Uranus, conjunction. And we've got your ruler in, yeah, so your ruler, let's say this is Uranus, and definitely bringing new beginnings for you. Okay, definitely new beginnings. Wow passionate new beginnings we've got the queen of cups emotions we've got the ten of cups happiness and joy and we've got the lust card strength card so um a really a lot of energy that's what i'm feeling a lot of emotional energy there's a profound healing coming in for you aquarius it feels like suddenly whatever you know this this life force energy that we hold tightly coiled in our in our solar plexus and the lower chakras it's it's something is slashing through the ties that wound it up okay so i feel like some of you are going to feel sexier again you're going to feel electrifying and people are going to feel that your energy is electrifying this will affect your aura your aura is going to expand so be mindful of that because when you walk into rooms you're suddenly going to be taking them over not only that, you will be more charming, magnetic, charismatic, persuasive. This is great for sales if you believe in your product and you're selling something really good. You can bring a lot of joy to people during this time as well. You can, with your energy, um, help them find their way back into joy. There's, there's a spiritual catapulting that is also happening for you. So a deep spiritual awareness rising up, a, a, um, an ascension, if you will. And um, but it does feel that it goes hand in hand also with a passion. So some of you need to be mindful not to be too fundamentalist about your beliefs, right? Whether these be spiritual, religious, political, whatever your beliefs in a certain topic, because I feel that you could tend to kind of try to put it out there too strongly to the people that you're you're surrounded by. But overall, it's it's a really good energy for you. And um, heightening your intuition, heightening your awareness, expanding your auric field, making you more charismatic, bringing you into a position of leadership, people looking to you for emotional leadership as well, for emotional stability as well. Um, a passionate re new relationship could start up out of nowhere, out of nowhere, someone new popping into your life and bringing the passion back to you and the joy. So it does feel like a really, really, really good movement for you. Okay. And last but not least, we're already at Pisces. Pisces, what's coming up for you? With this Jupiter in Uranus, Ur Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus conjunction. April 20th, and what is it marking? What is it bringing you? What energies are triggered for Pisces? Through this conjunction, please. Through this conjunction, what will what can Pisces expect? Overall, Pisces, we've got the Three of Cups, so it's going to be high energy, Four of Swords, ripping you out of the doldrums. So those of you Pisces that were, you know, you've been laying low, been super quiet the last couple of months to years, um, you've been just kind of to yourself. Things are going to change. It's almost like you're going to receive invites to everywhere, do things, um, find new friends. It's going to be social life going off the charts. We've got two of cups, <laughs> new romance. And then we've got the death card because you've let go of the past. You've let go of a past romance. You've got the three of coins, someone willing to work with you, and ace of coins, a tangible new situation and relationship. So Pisces, what this Jupiter and Uranus is bringing you suddenly out of the blue is the joy that you've been looking for, okay? So if you haven't been living the sweetness of life, you haven't been living that joy, you've been craving that, you've been craving having fun again, having friends, meeting people, it would behoove you to become more social, to go out, to 
visit groups or do events, do things that, you know, are in line with what you're interested in with hobbies, but get around other people. Do not isolate yourself in these energies. And I'm telling you, something new is going to come of this. And you'll finally, because some of you Pisces have been holding on to lovers that have swum out of your life a long time ago. And your energy, even though your mind and your heart and your gut, but your energy still has them in your field. And this energy of Jupiter Uranus, you're finally able to knock it out. So do some wound cleansing, womb healing, um, whatever, but get them out of your system totally. Or if you're male, get them out of your energy field, out of your heart, out of your lower chakras, okay? Um, but someone is coming in your life who's willing to work with you, work on themselves and work with you to build a solid foundation. Three plus one equals four, which is stability. This is someone who really wants to invest in you, who wants to hold on to you, who wants to build something new with you, who wants to build it from the ground up, who is um, absolutely open to you and who's giving you a real tangible offer. If this is not romantic, Pisces, it's definitely on a business level, but I do feel strong romantic tendencies coming for certain signs out of this Jupiter-Uranus um, conjunction. It is in Taurus, which is a sensual sign. It's a, you know, Venusian sign. It's a, um, yeah. <laughs> and um, so it does feel as if there's, there's something really sensual, sticky kind of, um, be careful with that, but otherwise enjoy, right? But don't, you know, stay free, right? Stay free, even with you can when you connect with others, stay free. Um, but it's, it's, um, I do feel a romance coming in for you. Okay, Pisces, very strongly. And because you guys have finally let go of someone that was still in your energy field from the past, um, probably still pulling strings or triggering you or what have you, but this Jupiter Uranus really marks an ending of that. It's like enough of that. We're not leaving Pisces back there and ripping you out of that, ripping you out of that, that comfortable nest of misery <laughs> into something fresh and new. And like I said, this person that is showing up in your life really is a, a grounded person, a lot of earth energy possibly. Um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, I'm feeling more Taurus, Capricornian energies, um, someone who's willing to really um, settle down, buy the house, do all that, that's coming in your life, okay? All right, so thank you so much for watching, and leave your comments in the description box below, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you, and don't forget to book your session, your personal session. You'll find the link to that in the description box as well. Some of you that have been with me for a while, you know that I've recently had to change everything due to my move. So that is reflected in the, um, you'll see that some things have changed a little bit, not too much. Uh, don't be surprised. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.